Hey guys, it's Fraser. Welcome to my channel. And as you have seen, we are back from lockdown. We are back in training here in Italy. So this video is going to cover the new sort of protocols and procedures that we have in place at the club, and then thought process behind what the guys are doing training-wise. Okay, let's talk rule one. Rule one of strength and conditioning is do no harm. So, safety first. All right, so how have things changed for us logistically in working with the guys? Well, we work in a, a, a tenzo, a, a gym, a permanent tent um, that can open and it's 30 meters by 15 meters. So we're lucky, we are lucky to have a good space. It's, of course, there's a permanent roof, um, which is important because, you know, when it rains, it pours here in Italy. Okay, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, let me tell you. Anyway, we're lucky to have that space, and instead of training 16 to 20 guys like we did in the past, the maximum group that we have is eight people at a time at the date of posting this video. So we've got this big space, we're able to maintain distance. Now, as you can see in the video, players come in one by one, they'll have a mask on, temperature is taken, there is disinfectant on their hands, and then they can go to an individual area to change their shoes and get ready for the session. Of course, when they're working with a barbell or whatever tool we are using, they'll disinfect, and they'll disinfect it and the next person will come in and do their deadlift or bench press or whatever. So we're very much maintaining the social distance still. Um, even though it's good, you know, you can have conversations with people, it's the social side of training, it's great to be back and I think the boys appreciate that as well. It's something that maybe isn't talked about much by SSC coaches, you know, just bringing the guys together, getting back into the flow of, of being social uh, is important because like lockdown for Italy was not lockdown for you. <sighs> okay, let me tell you, we had two months of, and quite rightly, we had two months of you're in your house, you're allowed to go to the shops, not frequently, and you're not allowed 200 meters from your house. Okay, it's not like the UK where you can go for a, an hour long cycle and, an hour, and, a, and a run, you know, for two months we were on proper lockdown. So this affects my guys both, I think, socially and mentally, but I'm not a psychologist, okay, I just recognise that guys are happy to see each other and, and be training again. Um, and of course, from a physiological, from a training point of view, that's going to affect what people could do and where people were coming from. So let's segue into that conversation now guys about the physiology and bringing people back to training because every coach has their opinion and you know I think all, all, all strength and conditioning coaches are going to follow the same, the same principles for bringing people back, okay? The tricky thing on this is that it is on chartered water in terms of, you know, there's always an off season, okay? Um, and you can consider this an off season, but in the off season athletes are generally active, not progressively, they're not following a uh, tough loading pattern on deadlift or whatever but um, you know, they, they remain active, whereas, as I've said, it was very difficult to remain active in Italy. So some guys were able to do, like I had some dumbbells, I was able to do some workouts and things like that. Um, other guys might not have had anything, other guys might have had a barbell and could go for runs because they were in the country. So everyone's coming from a different place in entering this um, general physical preparation block that we have going on now, so I was very much aware of that when we when we started. Um, so the key is in is in the name. Right now we've got a four week block of just getting our guys used to progressive loading again. And, and by that I don't mean they have to jump up week by week. Um, it's just about getting the barbell on your back, getting the barbell in your hands, just global loading, doing um, reps on, on chin-ups again and lunges and, and really drilling good movement and focusing on not relearning the skill because you don't just lose your skills but just dialing down on the basics really. 
Now, in terms of, we have a, a four week block and then we are going into still very general, but more specific. So guys will be grouped in specific attributes that they want to develop and, and we think that they need to develop. So that will, the, the exercises will still remain pretty general, but they'll just be more focused on the outcomes of what we're kind of trying to develop there in attributes. So right now it's just about, let's get you moving, let's get you probably back to where you were strength-wise after four weeks. It depends on the person and what they were able to do. Some guys have detrained, um, for example, on the squat, because my guys couldn't really, you know, didn't have access to, couldn't really load the legs. So most guys are using about 50%, and that was my recommendation on our rep scheme at the moment of their one RM on the squat. Now all I've said is on set one, if you've got 12 reps to do, make sure you feel like you could do 18. And that worked out about people were using like 50%. So for example, um, Zorro, a 200 kilogram squatter, he was in that 100 kilogram, he went to 110 because he had eight reps. And the movement looked good, it looked smooth, it was enough for week one just to blow out the cobwebs. And then we'll progress onto that and week four we're taking a heavy set of six. So that's the gym stuff. What about, you know, if you're coming back to running in competition and actual rugby? Well, here's the thing. We are not allowed to pass balls or, or play, play touch or, or, of course, we're not allowed to do any contact at the moment of posting this video. So it's something that I don't really have to worry right now about building up uh, running volume. Okay, so that is at the, at the bottom of the list just now. We're doing things in a warm up like landing mechanics and just getting our body ready for the block two, which should be more progressive. But actually, you know, we don't have to be ready to play rugby in six weeks time, which is quite a nice position to be in. Um, it, it can go for against you in this instance. It's, it's going for us because, you know, we've had such a long time off and you want to bring the guys in back to sprinting nice and slowly and safely, um, which we're doing. And also, of course, you know, build up running volume if it's necessary to get to where you... So, for example, if you are a rugby team that, um, or a person or whatever, whatever your sport is, you know, if, you're, if your running load is like 10, 10K a week, let's say, for example, you know, you've got four sessions and in total you're covering 10K a week and there's X amount of, of that running is, is sprints, you know, it's great that you have that information. You need to understand what your normal was, okay? And then just segment by segment, maybe over four weeks, maybe over six, it depends on your competition and when things start for you. But segment by segment, build up to that. So it might be week one you're doing running volume, might be 2K instead of 10K total, okay? And then you work out your percentage of sprints. So if, I don't know, if 20% of that 10K was over a certain amount of speed, then do your 2K and 20% of that 2K has to be over a certain speed limit, right? Then maybe the next week you're going to 4K, maybe the next week you're going to, and you're building up step by step. So that's what we would be doing. Um, just understand your normal week, what that looks like, where you need to be for your competition to have success, and just build up, build up to that. Much like if you're uh, preparing for a marathon, okay, you wouldn't just go out and think, well, you know, I've got a marathon in 12 weeks. What I think I will do is go and run a marathon on Monday and then probably do nothing until next Monday. And then maybe next week I'll run a marathon and then a marathon on the Friday. Like it doesn't work like that. Okay, you've got to build up to the marathon. And that's an extreme example, but hopefully it gives you a, a, an idea of some of the thought process around not just the gym side of stuff, but if you're building up running volume, you know, just do it step by step. So understand, where your normal was and is, how to get back there. Once you're there, there'll be an evening out, an even out period, um, if I can use that terminology, and then you can progress from there. So um, we have time, which is great. Um, great in the sense of physical preparation. Don't want to get into the, the psychological, you know, it's, it's important to know when the start date is for a, for a player, just to set goals and to set, to understand when they're going to be able to use their physical attributes but um, that will all come out in due course and in good time. So guys, hopefully this video has been useful. Hopefully I've shed some light on thought process behind training a little bit and you've taken something from it. If you have, please give me one of them because I really appreciate it. Of course, I'm always gonna encourage you to subscribe. Um, so please feel free to hit the button. Now, I'll wait for you, I'll wait for you.
Thank you. See how it didn't take long, did it? It just took two seconds. And, um, you know, share with someone if you find it useful. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you on the next video. Ciao.